The reason why we are typing in CD is to change directories. We're doing this because currently we're at this position on our file directory tree, but instead we want to be within the project repository folder. Now we can view the contents of that file. Next, let's look at uh, the history. And let's cross this out because we're done with that. So if we want to view the log, we can type git log and view the log that way. Uh, as you can see currently, we have two commits which currently will match the version uh, on the web. If we want to add changes, we would change it locally on our machine and then we would then upload it to the server so that they can be matching synced copies. How do we do that? Let's take a look. Let's say we make a directory for front end. Actually, let's call yeah, let's call it front end. And let's say we have notes within the front end folder. And let's say we have a title. And let's save that. And now if we type git status, we'll see that there are changes. Let me scroll up so you can see my screen. Um, so this is untracked files. And so we could say git add front end to add everything within that folder. But if we are pedantic, we could be precise. And that would be the best way to go about using version control. And so we've typed in git add front end notes.md. And now we look at the status again, we'll see that changes need to be committed. It is now tracked, it needs to be committed. And uh, we could use the com commit sub command to do so. Right. Now, if we look at uh, the current pointer position on our machine right now, Locally, it is at the most recent commit. It is a stack, so it is at the top. The server version is still only two commits instead of three. We can refresh the page to confirm this. And how do we just sync it together? Well, now this is where we type git push to be able to move our local changes to the server. And you should see a message like that when it's successfully uploaded. Now when I refresh the page, you'll see that there are changes.